Hello and welcome to this episode of the Worship Band Builder Podcast, where we are working with you to lay the foundations for skillful worship. I'm Eric Roberts, and I'm joined by my co-host, Emily Roberts. Hello, all. And actually, I said lay the foundations, but really it would be foundation, right? One. Foundation. Lay the foundation or foundations. Mm. Well, you wrote foundation. Singular? Yes. I did. Well, then that's that must be right. That's it. If I wrote it, it must be be the right answer. Well, welcome back, friends and people on the YouTube and the podcast. You know, you can get the podcast on all of these super special places like iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube if you want to see us and you want to see everything going on in here. And we just did our first five minutes before the podcast, which was, I'm not sure, probably a ginormous waste of five <laughs> minutes. But if you want to waste five minutes with us, just go on the YouTube channel. We'll have the Five minutes before the podcast. Perhaps you will find it time well wasted. Time well wasted. Uh, is she throwing in country music? <laughs> She's throwing in country music references. We live references. in Nashville. Oh, Why not? we live in Nashville, but they don't all live in it. Some people are probably like wondering, what is that? Does that? All right. We'll put the link in the description for the artist and song. You can listen to the t- time well wasted. That's not a worship song, but I would not pick that. I would not, could not, should not pick Time Well Wasted for my worship set. And why is that? Well, there's so many songs out there. And that one is not it. Time I don't I don't know. <laughs> I could I don't think Brad Paisley song, that Brad Paisley song is going to be the next worship We hit. have done a Brad Paisley song in church. Yeah, we have. We've done a Brad Paisley what was it? Uh uh When I Get Where I'm Going. Yes. Now that Duet that's a good with one. Dolly Parton. Yeah, but that was still Beautiful. not not a great congregational song, right? No, no, it's not a sing along. That was a special back in the day when we still had specials. Today's episode is how to select new songs for worship. And really, we're going to talk about the big 50, which is your list, which is going to come up. So, there are a lot of songs out there. How do you pick songs? This is a huge deal if you're the worship leader and or the pastor trying to pick songs. How do, how do you do it? And it's getting, it's not easy picking songs. Well, I think you have to start with what you already have, yeah. right? I mean, let's take a look. Let's inventory what songs we regularly play and decide. And do what with them? Well, we decide keep or pitch. Is this something that, that is still relevant? Is this something that the congregation is tired of? Um, are we ready to move on to something else? But what if it's Amazing Grace? Nobody's tired of that, right? That's a classic. That's yeah. a keeper. I that goes that in the, the keep pile. So there's a lot of songs. We're going to talk about really, she, she's diving right into you know, this list, and I'm going to call it the Big 50. You know, we may, we may keep that term. We may drive that down into the ground and be like, the Big 50. It was about 100 songs back when I was leading, but really we were picking from more like 50 songs. So I'll explain the Big 50 real quick, and then we'll go back to how we Do find that. those. The Big 50 would be a list somewhere, not on a scratch of paper, but on a computer, on a digital device somewhere, most likely, unless you don't have a computer. If you don't have a computer, go down to Best you Buy. You can just keep it on paper if you want to. Okay, all right. Everybody's got their Everybody's... system of organization, and if you like to have a tangible sheet of paper with your list, then just do it. You know what? She's right. I, I shouldn't have said that to people. If you don't want to write on a computer, don't do it. But the, the point is you're going to have a list somewhere. I use Excel, okay, a spreadsheet. And it's a list of the songs. The Big 50 would be 25 core songs. Okay, those are your rotating songs right now, the songs you're playing. Then you're going to have 25 Outer Edge songs. Okay, those older songs. Songs you're phasing out. Songs you can do without. Songs with a, um, I with don't a know history. Songs you can do without, but oh, potentially. Songs you can't, maybe I meant songs you can't do without. That would and make more sense. Songs with a history. So. What does that mean? Like if your church, you know, went through a really rough time and you were singing Shout to the Lord, and that's just one of those songs that, that's kind of ingrained in the longevity of your church. So like okay. that's, that's a song. So maybe well, there's 25 of those. One thing you didn't put on there that I noticed is um, songs that are specific to certain days. You know, you're not going to do those every week, but, you know, you've probably got some Christmas hymns in there. You've probably got something for Easter, Palm Sunday, even yeah. um, like Communion Sunday, maybe stuff w- like that. Yeah. And I wouldn't put those in my 25 Outer Edge. So I'd have 25 cores, 
25 outer edges. Then I'd have another sheet on that list like Christmas, okay, Easter. Okay, all right. We're expanding beyond the 50 to include holidays. Yeah, so the, it's called the Big 50. So uh, That sounds all-inclusive. Yeah, the Big 50 plus. So it's really going to be 100 because you're going to have 25 core, 25 outer edge. You're going to have 12 new songs that you're working on for the new year. Then you're going to have another part of your list that is really popular songs and culture and possible new songs coming up. So the, the whole list might incorporate about 100, but the big 50 is really the ones in your main Those rotation. Those are the songs in, yes, in your main rotation that you're going to sing yeah. again and again. I'm glad that we had this conversation trying to put this on paper and then explain it the <laughs> list probably will have around 100 if you if you if you really broke it out but the big 50 are going to be like every week you're going to the list you're probably going to look at that top 25 and then you might pick one off the second 25 you know one on the outer edge or one you know a historical song that people really love you know, a throwback. Those are going to be in the, the outer 25. And we're going to talk about putting together a set list on another podcast. Sure. Yeah, we'll talk about that. But this is just how to decide what goes on that list. Yeah, this episode's really about how to how to select songs into your list and how to and how to basically select really select songs not even introduce i don't think we're going to talk about how to introduce we are we will show them yes uh, that to, that'll be another podcast too yeah the, this we're not going to try to get super detailed on this one it's like creating your list the, the list is important because you can't well number one you can't pick a bunch of new songs every week you can't just go onto the internet and go on to like you know some website and pick a bunch of songs and show up and do them it'll just be a disaster right Yes. It reminds me of when I was a freshman in marching band. Oh, wow. I can't, that must have been. My favorite marching band, yes. Yeah. Um, and our director was a lot of fun. When I got to high school, the band was big because the director was a lot of fun. But what he was doing is selecting new songs and new marching routines Every single week, we were learning something completely new. Wow. And it was fun, but it wasn't very good. You guys didn't win a bunch of competitions? <laughs> no, no, we didn't even go to competition. And that's, so that's kind of what we're trying to avoid. Um, it, let me tell another story. When I first met Eric, um, I used to ask his grandmother what she was going to make for dinner when we would come over. And after a while, I started figuring out that it was going to be the same thing it was last time and the same thing it was the time before that because she was a Southern cook. This was something I knew nothing about, but what Southern ladies, in just from my personal experience, and please, you can comment if this is not true in your experience, but uh, his side of the family, they all have their dish, their signature dish that they are excellent at making. They do it over and over and they get really, really good at it. And so that's what having your big 50 is going to do for you. Your band is going to get really, really good at doing those songs. Yeah, she's tearing up my outline right now. <laughs> she's tearing it up. Yeah, she's right. And just like uh, I was thinking about my men's chorale, they would sing the same. I think they'd sing the same songs for like the last, since I left college, like 20 years ago. Oh, are they still like, doing them? Yeah, I think they're still doing Boudoir and they're still doing Women and they're still doing a couple of these. So I, when I go back to the alumni, they're doing new songs, some, okay. but then they're doing these standard songs. So therefore the director, he doesn't have to you know figure out brand new songs and figure out all the lift pieces and the accompanist. They all just kind of know and and it's cool and it and it gives them a, a sort of a flavor. So you're gonna have sort of a a vibe in your church. Like when I'm going through the Christian bookstore and I hear a song, I'm like, oh, that's from Living Hope. Oh, that song was from. That's another thing that we talked about. Some you reasons have for memories this. Memories connected to those songs. Yeah, that's in my outline. Your first, your church will learn to sing and connect with God through the Big Fifty. And when they hear them on the radio or at home in the car, they're going to feel connected and they're going to connect with God and with your church and with the community. That's kind of the point. It's always every church I've been to, you know, if I heard my life is in you right now, I'd be like, oh, Belver community. That feels like Belver community. And it's weird, but it's part, it becomes part of the DNA. And you, you mentioned the second thing already. Your band's going to be really 
really good at the songs they know. And if you do them over and over again, you're going to look like a pro. After a while, it's going to get easier. And it's just easier when you're picking from a smaller list. Now, the big 50 or the 100, it could be 20. You know, if you're, you're a brand new worship leader, it could be the big 20. It could be the big 10. You know, I know uh, one of our students that started leading, they just took 10 songs. And every, every couple of weeks, they lead worship every couple of weeks. They pick two or three of those 10 songs. And they don't do... 50. I mean, 50 would be for a big church, for a, for a, for a, uh, a worship leader like who's very experienced, who is running a program, 50 would be the top. Um, and I noticed that at Fairhaven, they do that same thing too, the church, our church from Ohio. They just have the same songs pretty much all the time. All right, so you want people to get used to the songs they're playing, and that's what all the churches we've gone to have done. Even the big, you know, really elaborate churches, production-oriented style churches, there's got to be something familiar when the people walk in. So, how... Well, for you and for the congregation. For your band, that makes it yes. so that you're competent and confident. But it also makes it so that people can come in and just worship. They're not trying to learn the song. They are immediately connecting with the song because they know it. Right. Yes. So you also mentioned, and this brings us to our next point, you said something about 12 new songs. Um, And that is the piece of this that keeps us from just becoming stagnant, just getting into a rut of playing the same thing all the time, is introducing not every week, but maybe once a month, once every six weeks, maybe, a new song. And those songs, we can decide if they stay or if they go. If, you're, if your congregation connects with those, then you add that to the list and you find something that you can drop off so that you maintain a list of 50, right? Am I telling this right? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Okay. You want to keep, yeah, you're picking... New songs, and that's what I was talking about. The other parts of this list on my sp- on my spreadsheet, which I think I'm going to include like a little template. So if you want to go to the website worshipbandbuilder.com, click on this episode, uh, how to select worship songs. This will be episode 19. Um, then you'll be able to get maybe my little template, my little uh, uh, sheet template, in case you're beyond writing in a notebook. And you're actually oh, using a computer. Beyond. If you're beyond uh, Emily's version. it's so version. much better to <laughs> put it in a computer. She probably would really, you probably would really write in a notebook, wouldn't you? I like paper. Yeah, I do too. Uh, it'll show you, you will have, and this is going to be the point, you're going to have possible new songs on this list, really popular songs in your culture on this list. You're going to have little mini lists within your list. So sheets of your sheet will be, here's some new songs coming up, little sheets in your sheet. Yeah. Anyway, you have your spreadsheet and then it has sheets. Okay? <laughs> you're making my head spin right now. Exactly. So you guys know what I'm talking about. If you're using Excel, you have a little sheet and then you have sheets within that sheet on Excel. So some of those you're going to open up or even just a list down the page. Here's some new songs. So you're driving in the car and you hear a song and you're like, oh man, that song's amazing. So stick it on the list for possible new songs. Once you have stopped and parked the car. Yes. Well, I use my <laughs> laptop right on the dashboard since I'm very laptop <laughs> yes, oriented. That's right. Yes. <laughs> okay. So the, the beginning of this was how to select a song. So that, that's, that's what I want to do in the second half and, um, of the podcast, how to select the song. So you've got the list, you know how you're going to do that. Selecting songs is a process over time. It doesn't just, you're not going to sit down one day and select a bunch of new songs and they're going to hit. You mentioned it's they, if they work, put them on the list. If they don't, they don't. If you're going to introduce a new song every like six weeks, you're going to start introducing the song the way we talk about in our future podcast or in our uh, foundations bundles. We teach you how to uh, secret ways, special ways to stay sneak with it us, in. folks. Yeah, stay with the secret ways to introduce songs. <laughs> it feels so weird to say that, but there, <laughs> there are these little ways to do it. And we, we talk about that. I think we've done a podcast on, on that. If not, we've talked about it a little bit. We'll, we'll get to that. Just, just stay tuned. Stay tuned because uh, you can find these songs. You can put them on your list. When you get ready to introduce them, if they flop, you get rid of them. If they're like, oh, we might like them, you put them in the list and maybe they become the new hit of the church. Maybe you're going to do it like a bunch. So where do you find songs? That's what I want to talk about now. Okay. Where are we going to find these songs? 
Oh, you're going to let me tell where we're going to yeah, find the songs? tell us, Emily. All where right. would you find songs? And then well, I'll tell you where I would. I think that our notes say to check CCLI. <laughs> oh, you looked at the notes. I did. Yeah, there's three things on the notes. CCLI.com has a top 100. And what is CCLI? Christian Copyright Licensing International or something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to put you on the spot. I thought you knew it because I never remember what all the letters stand for. It stands for cats and cowboys <laughs> like ice cream. <laughs> Dot com. Uh, Christian copyright licensing, I think. So they have a list because they know what everybody's singing. So they, they have these lists. And if you just go to Google and type in CCLI top 25, I like to go to the top 25 because the top 100 gets long, you know, and a song, once it gets off the top 10, so you just go into the list and look and just think about it. I personally stay on the top 10 or 25 because I wanted, I wanted to see what's really popular. That's my first level, especially when I was leading in a bigger program. It was like, people get kind of weird about what songs you're playing. And I kind of use that as my, well, it's popular. So don't complain about it, kind oh, of. You know, like I kind of. Everybody stayed, else is doing it. Yeah, like everybody. Peer pressure. That's what I would do. I would use peer pressure <laughs> on them. I'd say, "Oh, you don't like the song? Well, too bad. It's number three on CCLI." Aye, <laughs> <laughs> No, but that it gives you because uh, you want to be popular as a worship leader. You want to feel good about yourself. You don't want to, you know, play songs and everybody looks at you like, that guy's song selection is terrible. Where's he <laughs> getting all these dumb songs for our church? You know, you don't want to feel that way. She's looking at me like I'm crazy, but like, <laughs> seriously, people. This sounds like junior high school. Like, you're... Hey, welcome to Worship Leading 101. I'm going to be a part of the popular club. I want to be popular, so I'm going to pick song number four today on CCLI. Well... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'm going to get to that because th this is the beginning of the mentality of picking songs and get used to it. If you're in a modern church, you're playing, people are going to be upset. They're going to say, well, I want to sing this song. And you're going to listen to it and be like, you mean the song from 1992 that nobody knows? You're going to, you're standing sort of in between. You're making the decision usually as a worship leader, what songs everybody's singing. Yes. So. Well, and there is a connection to radio that... People in, in contemporary time, yeah. in the moment, are already listening to the popular radio songs. They're already familiar with those, which would make it easier to introduce them. And that's and, another and reason. Integrate them into your worship set. Yeah, you were so with me. there is that. If, if you did like Lord I Need You by Matt Marr, it's on the top, it was on the top 100 or top 20, 10. And it was also on, on K-Love where we lived. And so it was an easy song because we played it and everybody like sang right away. You're like, oh, they love this song. The song is still very popular. It's also hard to get a song popular without it being semi-good. So if you're looking at the top charts on K-Love, if you're looking at the top charts on CCLI, and you're noticing this song's been on the top 10 for, you know, six months, you're probably behind. You know, you think, I better introduce this song, see if this is one that they want to sing. So you're going to use also, there's a, a chart, it's called praisecharts.com. A link on our, um, on our show notes is slash songs slash hot. Hot. So, yeah. Now this is, be careful with this one because I listened to it. This is very, very... Uh, really like uh, Graves in the Gardens or whatever's on that list. It's very okay. new. I mean, and I think the hot list from this website is really like almost like the popularity list. The The CCLI is a lot more data, you know, for, as far as I can tell. In other a words, lot more data. Okay, in other words, they'll, they'll, they'll sample like thousands of churches or hundreds of churches and they'll know like over a long, over a quarter, this was the song that was played. This is the top 10 list. Now this praisecharts.com uh, slash songs slash hot. I'm not sure where they're getting that list, but it was like very, very new songs. The top three songs were Bethel. And, the, uh, you know, so I sense that Graves into Gardens hasn't even been out for three months. So okay. it's probably what's played on radio. They're probably pulling from radio charts, maybe from just popularity charts or something. And I don't know praise charts because I don't talk to praise charts and know how they're doing this. But the list was definitely not a mirror of the top 10 or top 25 in CCLI. Okay. So that's kind of a lot of data, but... Well, and there's something else, too, because currently we have some issues with who's writing the songs. We we have uh, 
congregation members that feel very strongly that they will not sing any songs by X publisher. Yeah, we and, have issues. And some of those publishers are very popular. And so you look at that and go, well, my number third, where to, how do I pick songs? Use your gut, use your style, and take notes and see what people connect with. If everybody in your congregation has kind of told you, we don't like Publisher X or we don't like Church X, because a lot of the top songs are coming from top churches, our society and our church society has changed a bit. So they got these big bands and so they got all these big publishers mm-hmm. that are basically... Uh, maybe they don't line up with your doctrine. Maybe they don't line up with your um, style, and you're not going to go pick them just because they're on the hot chart list. You're going to have to use your gut, your style, and your church thing. And the charts, I said here in the notes, will likely move faster than your congregation at this point. That's almost always going to be true. The charts, especially this hot list and these, you know, these um, CCM lists, are going to move really fast. In other words, they're going to you're going to see number one songs pop up that that your church hasn't heard of or that they're not ready for. It may take a year or two before they know it. For example, Trading My Sorrows back in the day was on the top 100 or top 10 for like 10 or 15 years. Right. So some churches would think Trading My Sorrows was a brand new cutting edge song, while other churches would be like, well, we've been singing that for 15 years. It's still on the top 100. Same with how Great Is Our God? It's still on the top 10. Oh, is it? Yeah, and I think it's been there for like 10 or 15 years. Yes. So the ch- that chart in the CCLI world is moving, um, is, is kind of what I like to look at, because I'm like, that's a longer term chart than like the CCM, you know, p- songs will pop up on CCM charts and they'll go away within before the church even picks up on them. Well, the goal is yeah. not to stay current. That's not the right the overarching purpose of your song selection. We need songs that our church can worship along with. So, um, you know, if if that's a song from fifty years ago, so be it. Yeah, and that's why your top fifty is. I couldn't write a top fifty. Big 50, I couldn't put one on the website and say, there's the big 50. I could write a big 50 uh, for our church, the church at Spring Hill. I could go back and look at Planning Center and see what all the guy, you know, that Robbie has picked and we've done as we've our led. Our worship leader. Our worship leader, Robbie. I could go back and look and go, in a couple hours, I could probably make a list of, we don't even have nearly 50 songs at our church. We we have probably more like a condensed 30, which is good. Um but I could go back and find a 30 to 50 list for our church. But it would you'd look at it and go, well, I don't know. Maybe some of those are the same. Maybe they're not. But here's how you want to pick your list as well. So you, you know you have the charts. But here I'm going to share some personal experience, my personal experience. And it's called Live With The Song First, okay? That's how you're going to really know as a worship leader. The burden's on you. And it is a burden. I mean, you have to... Take it seriously so you live with the song through your Spotify playlist. A responsibility, maybe. Yes, it's Is a that responsibility. Than burden. It also sometimes feels like a burden because, <laughs> you know, you get bogged down in responsibilities and you feel like, oh my goodness, I've got to pick all these songs. And what if people don't like this? And sometimes people do complain. Sometimes people do let, let you know, hey, that song you play is dumb, you know, in whatever words they use. It comes across as, I don't like that. So it, it can be, you can feel that way. I get, don't, don't feel bad. Live with the songs and sort of worship with them. So use Spotify, use YouTube, uh, jam with the songs in your key, print off some charts, um, jam with, put it, put it in your key, worship with the songs in, in your car, with your guitar, alone before you're ever going to do this at church. So you're, by the time I put a song on stage, I already know the song. I already know all the little parts of the song. I already know. I don't just run up to a new song like, we're doing a new song and try to learn it with my band. Do you I, ever listen to a song over and over again and just decide, this isn't this isn't one I want to add? Yeah. Yeah, because the beginning, like maybe in the first, you know, you hear the song and you think, oh, you're like emotional about it. And you think, oh, this is a great song. And then you put it on your list. You put it on your playlist. You put it on your maybe list on your on your computer. And then... You know, maybe a month goes by, you look at it again and you're like, and then you go, no, that's not going to work. And you just keep pushing it to the bottom. That's how, that's why this list works because it kind of, the good stuff bubbles up. So maybe you're listening to the song in your car for six months, two months, three months, and you just go, 
yeah, I just don't feel that anymore, you know? So that's why it's important to have these playlists and have this list that you're writing because three months later, you'll come back to it and go, you know what? That was a really good song. And you'll listen to it and go, yeah, let's do this one. But you've already, you already know it because you've been listening to it. So you, you kind of have to do that. I don't ex- expect that you would just go sit on your computer, pop open some songs and, you know, some top worship playlist from Spotify that somebody wrote, somebody put out there and pick four or five songs and feel comfortable. No, your church won't feel comfortable. Your band won't feel comfortable. And you won't be leading worship. You'll just be playing some songs that maybe not even are a part of your life. So live with the songs. Does that make sense? Yes. And then ask some questions. As we get ready to close this out, ask us questions. You can put those in the comments at our YouTube channel, or you can send them right at, right along at worshipbandbuilder.com. But ask yourself these questions while you're listening to the songs. And this is pretty important, but we'll, we'll ending with it, but it is very important. Where is the song pointing? Is it pointing to... And, and you, you have to kind of start to listen to the song lyrics and ask yourself, what is this going to... Where's the song pointing? Like, um, you know what I mean, right? I know what you mean. Yeah, expound on that. Okay. Um, does this song talk about the attributes of God? Is it talking to God or about God? Or is it mostly about me and how I feel about things? Um, Ideally, we want to try to pick songs that get us to focus on God because he is the object of our worship. So um, that's something to just have in the back of your mind as you're listening. You may have some songs that, that are me songs that are feeling songs, but that shouldn't be the, um, the lion's share of your song list. Yeah. And does the song say something I want to say to God, something I would actually say to God? And I, when I was writing this, I was like, yeah, that's a good question for everybody out there writing songs right now and picking songs. Does the song say something I want to say to God? And does it say something I would actually say? And I'll make it a little further. Do I even know what I'm saying when I yes, sing this? Yes, that we have experienced that a time or two, or in a worship service, and we look at each other and say, "Do you know what this song means?" Yeah, I'm like, I do not know what we just sang. <clears throat> so, as a worship leader, you have to really look at that, think about that, and say that. And is the song really good, solid, worshipful, or is it just cool and popular? You're going to have a little bit of a mix <clears throat> in your um, set list. Some are going to be popular. Some are going to be just cool, and that's fine for an opener. But you've got to have a mix. So use discernment, and you can grow a big, strong, big 50. A strong, big 50. Yeah, line your songs up to Scripture. Can I find a Bible verse that supports what this song is saying? Because if I can't, then we shouldn't use it. And mix them up. Some me songs, some you songs, some I worship you songs, some some very little songs about me, me, me. But a lot of but we got to look at the way the worship is being written, sing it, say it, live with it, and put it on a list that our church can rely on for really not just years but even a decade. The the list will go on. It probably will outlast you even in that church, unless you're uh, a rare worship leader who's going to stick around for ten or fifteen years. All right, if you have any questions, go to worshipbandbuilder.com, click on podcast, and uh, definitely look up for the next upcoming podcast. We're going to teach you how to sneakily introduce. It's, she- n- it's not sneaky. It's just consider it. Consider it with skill, introducing new songs to your church and helping them grow into this big 50 with you and your band. God bless you guys. Thanks for listening. And make sure, if you really like it, just leave a comment and tell us what you think. <laughs> <laughs>